Identification and assessment of the cecum is the best initial manure. If it is collapsed, lesion is in the small bowel. If it is dilated, it indicates large bowel obstruction. The type of surgical procedure required will depend upon the nature of the cause. Then, depending on the cause, you can divide the adhesions, resect the bowel, and do bypass or proximal decompression. Viable bowel. Now, how will you identify viable bowel? It should be pink. It should be pulsatile. That means you can feel the pulsations of the mesentery in the bowel. And third important thing is the peristalsis, which will be present in that particular bowel. How will you know whether bowel is viable or not? If it is not showing all these three things, you can give 100% oxygen and keep a hot mop on the bowel. Wait for these three things to appear. If they don't appear, then you can say, okay, the viability is not there. And then you can go forward for resection and then do anastomosis. Large bowel obstruction. The common causes are carcinoma or diverticular disease. It can present in an acute or chronic form. In that also you should do midline incision. If it is removable, then resection and anastomosis is done. If the lesion is irremovable, bypass or proximal decompression is done. Now we'll go for the different types of obstructions. Obstruction by adhesions. It is the commonest type of intestinal obstruction. When patient comes to the casualty, around 75% of patients will be shown to have adhesive obstruction. So whenever it is asked that which is the commonest cause of obstruction, the first answer should be adhesive obstruction. Any source of peritoneal irritation results in the local fibrin production, which produces adhesions between the opposed surface. Example is tuberculosis or Crohn's disease. Operation for appendicitis and gynecological procedures are the most common precursors. In special type of obstruction, in internal hernia, the sites of internal herniation are foramen of Winslow, a hole in the mesentery and in the transverse mesocolon, defect in the broad ligament, congenital or acquired diaphragmatic hernia, duodenal retroperitoneal fossae, left paraduodenal and right duodenojejunal. In cecal or appendiceal retroperitoneal fossa, it can be superior, inferior or retrocecal and intersigmoid fossa. Now the question can be asked, which can be, which is not present in the internal herniation, which site is not seen the internal herniation. And then you know already the sites of internal herniation. So whichever is not mentioned, you can say this site is not there in the internal herniation. Obstruction from enteric stricture. Small bowel strictures are usually secondary to tuberculosis or Crohn's disease. The third malignant stricture can be due to lymphoma. Presentation can be subacute or chronic. Standard surgical management remains same as resection and anastomosis. Bolus obstruction. That is very important because it can be caused by food. The food bolus is the first thing. Second thing can be trichobezoar, phytobezoar. Then it can be gallstone. Then it can be round worms which are usually seen in children. Acute intussusception. This topic is very, very important as it is maximally asked in all the competitive exams. Acute intussusception is clinically, in emergency and in exam. All three ways important topic. So acute intussusception is the condition in which one portion of the gut becomes invaginated within the immediately adjacent segment. Invariably, it is the proximal segment into the distal bowel. Etiology is commonly seen in children peak incidence at 3 to 9 months. Etiology can be idiopathic or gastroenteritis and urinary tract infection can be followed by intussusception. Main causative factor will be hyperplasia of pears patches in the terminal ileum, which can be initiating event may occur secondary to weaning. In older children, it is associated with Meckel's diverticulum, polyp or appendix. 
in adult it is seen following usually a polyp submucosal lipoma or tumor in adult it is seen after period of long fasting and the colocolic variety is common the intussusception is composed of three parts the entering or inner tube which is called as intussusceptum a returning or middle tube the outer or sheath which is called as intussuscipiens the intussusception consists of three parts the outer tube or the sheath which is called as intussuscipiens the middle part and then the inner part or inner sheath which is called as intussusceptum as you can see this is the apex of the intussusception now which will get affected most the apex or the outer layer right the apex because the blood supply will get hampered so the strangulation is most commonly seen at the apex of the intussusceptum intussusception may be ileocolic that is the commonest variety 77% and then multiple to retrograde are the least common varieties clinical features will be classical the child develops sudden onset screaming associated with drawing up of legs the attack lasts for about few minutes recurs every 15 minutes and becomes progressively severe during attacks the child has facial pallor between the episodes the child remains lethargic the examination should be done between the episode classically the abdomen is not distended the lump may be felt which hardens on palpation presence in only 50 to 60% of cases emptiness in the right iliac fossa is called as a sign of dance on pr that is per rectal examination blood stained mucus will be seen this is also known as red currant jelly stool the extensive ileocolic or colocolic intussusception the apex may be palpable or even protrude from the anus plain x ray abdomen reveals evidence of small or large bowel obstruction with an absent cecal gas shadow in ileo ilear or ileo colic cases barium enema diagnose the presence of ileo colic or colocolic form then it is called as a claw sign ct scan used in doubtful cases barium enema can be used therapeutically to reduce the intussusception in children now this is the question which is asked where barium enema can be used therapeutically and the options will be given so the right option is intussusception operative management remains as same resuscitation then followed by rail tube aspiration and intravenous rehydration a midline incision is taken reduction is achieved by squeezing the most distal part of the mass in the cephalic direction do not pull viability of the small bubble should be checked carefully if there are adhesions between the inner and the outer part you have to break the adhesions with the finger and this is specifically known as copes method so the question is what is copes method or in which uh, in, in the obstructive into susception which method can be used so the answer remains the same that is copes method an irreducible or gangrenous into susception resection and anastomosis or temporary end stoma is created now we'll come to another important topic that is volvulus a volvulus is a twisting or axial rotation of the portion of the bowel around its mesentery when complete it forms a closed loop obstruction which results in ischemia secondary to vascular occlusion it can be primary or secondary primary form occurs due to congenital mild rotation of the gut abnormal mesenteric attachments and congenital bands example as in volvulus neonatrum secondary volvulus is more common variety than the primary and it occurs due to actual rotation of the piece of bowel around adhesions or stoma sigmoid volvulus is a important volvulus because it is seen commonly rotation occurs in the anti clockwise direction predisposing factors can be high residue diet and chronic constipation 
The clinical symptoms remain same as large bowel obstruction, only they are intermittent. That means sometimes the volvulus gets derotated on itself and then the patient passes a large amount of flatus and feces and then the patient is absolutely normal. Again after some days he develops the same symptoms and it follows. That shows that it is a volvulus. X-ray abdomen shows characteristic bent inner tube or coffee bean appearance. Gastrographin enema shows narrowing at the site of the volvulus and a bird's beak appearance. Treatment is done mainly decompression, flexible sigmoidoscopy or rigid sigmoidoscopy and insertion of flatus tube for deflation of gut. It should be followed by elective procedures. Definitive treatment is sigmoid colectomy. If decompression fails, the early laparotomy should be done. The loop is derotated. When the bowel is viable, sigmoid colon is fixed to the posterior abdominal wall. When the bowel is not viable, of course, resection is done. Sigmoid colectomy is done where anastomosis is considered unwise. Paul Mikulic's procedure or Hartmann's procedure is done and re-anastomosis is done later on. Acute intestinal obstruction of the newborn. Incidence is 1 in 2000 live births. Causes can be congenital atresia and stenosis, volvulus neonatrum, muconium ileus and Hirschsprung's disease. Now congenital atresia varies depending on the anatomical site. Its right starts from the duodenum which is the commonest site for intestinal atresia and then it, the other sites follows. The commonest question which can be asked is which is the common type of atresia and it is duodenal atresia. It can be also seen in higher incidences seen in multiple sites. Muconium ileus. This is the neonatal manifestation of cystic fibrosis. Muconium is normally kept fluid by the action of pancreatic enzyme. Inspecited muconium becomes filled in the terminal ileum causing intestinal obstruction may be palpated as rubbery swelling. 40% of cases are associated with complication such as volvulus neonatrum, atresia or muconium ileus and then causing peritonitis. Muconium is usually seen when the pancreatic enzymes are not there. So it can be seen in cystic fibrosis. If you think how muconium will fill the intestine, you will know the X-ray findings because there will be no gas and fluid level as it is very thick and the total X-ray finding will be no gas fluid levels in muconium ileus. Paralytic ileus is the state in which there is failure of transmission of the peristaltic waves secondary to neuromuscular failure. The result is accumulation of fluid and gas in the lumen of the intestine leading to same clinical symptoms that is abdominal distension, vomiting, constipation and absence of bowel sounds. The types of paralytic ileus are post-operating which can be self-limiting that means from 24 to 48 hours, may be prolonged in presence of hypoproteinemia or metabolic abnormality. The other causes of paralytic ileus can be infection which is localized or generalized, Reflux ileus, which can be seen in fracture spine, ribs, retroperitoneal hemorrhage, application of plastic, application of plaster jacket, metabolic seen in uremia and hypokalemia, intestinal ischemia and systemic sepsis. Management remains same as the intestinal obstruction, that means Ryle's tube aspiration, restriction to oral intake till the bowel sounds return. Electrolyte balance must be maintained and specific treatment directed towards the cause is given. If paralytic ileus is prolonged and threatens life, laparotomy should be considered to exclude any hidden cause or to facilitate bowel decompression. Pseudo obstruction. In this condition, there is obstruction in the absence of a mechanical cause or acute intestinal disease. It is associated with variety of syndromes where there is an underlying neuropathy or myelopathy or both. Small intestinal pseudo obstruction can be primary or secondary. 
ट्रीटमेंट इज द करेक्शन ऑफ अंडरलाइंग डिसऑर्डर सीसाप्राइड इज ड्रग ऑफ चॉइस मेटाक्लोप्रोमाइड एंड एरिथ्रोमाइसिन इज द पुअर ड्रग ऑफ चॉइस एंड सीसाप्राइड इज द ड्रग ऑफ चॉइस कोलोनिक सूडो ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन मे ऑकर्स इन टू फॉर्म्स एक्यूट और क्रॉनिक एक्यूट फॉर्म इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज ऑजेलवीज सिंड्रोम सिम्टम्स ऑफ एक्यूट लार्ज बॉबल ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन आर द सेम दैट आर सीन इन क्रॉनिक कोलोनिक सूडो ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन एक्सरे विल शो ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन एंड सीकल डायलिटेशन सीकल परफोरेशन इज अ नोन कॉम्प्लिकेशन सो द क्वेश्चन कैन बी आस्ड एज ऑलजीवीज परफोर इन ऑलजीवीज डिसीज वॉट इज कॉमनली सीन सो सीकल परफोरेशन इज कॉमनली सीन बिकॉज सीकम विल बी डायलेटेड एंड फाइनली विल बी परफोरेटेड Diagnosis is confirmed by colonoscopy or water soluble enema. Treatment is colonoscopic decompression or by flatus tube. If colonoscopy fails or not available, tube cecostomy is done. In chronic form, it may respond to cisapride and if it is recurrent, then subtotal colectomy or ileorectal anastomosis is done. Acute mesenteric ischemia. Now this is a very important topic. as it is confusing whether it is arterial or venous so always remember acute mesenteric ischemia can be arterial as well as venous because there are four types or four forms of ischemia which is seen and they can be arterial embolus arterial thrombosis vasospasm or venous thrombosis embolus is most common cause of acute mesenteric ischemia and mainly affect the distal arteries acute occlusion caused by thrombosis occurs in the proximal mesenteric arteries near their origin sources for embolus of superior mesenteric artery include left art atrial fibrillation mural myocardial infarction arthromatous plaques from the aortic aneurysm and mitral valve vegetation associated with endocarditis the question which will be asked as the superior mesenteric artery embolus is seen in a b c or d and in that one condition will not be including the following conditions so you have to exclude which is not given in the causative factors of the embolus primary thrombosis of the superior mesenteric veins may occur in association with factor 5 lead in portal hypertension portal pyemia and sickle cell disease finally in women taking contraceptive pills main clinical symptoms remain same but the pain which will be there it will be severe associated symptoms like nausea vomiting and diarrhea will be seen physical findings are absent early in the course of ischemia with the bowel infarction suddenly there will be abdominal distension peritonitis passage of bloody stool angiography is the only most commonly reliable investigation which will be done in this case even the ct scan of abdomen might not give you the right perfect diagnosis in the acute mesenteric ischemia and angiography is the right choice of investigation which should be done for embolus or thrombus induced acute mesenteric ischemia the treatment is surgical revascularization like embolectomy thrombectomy or mesenteric bypass the standard treatment of acute mesenteric venous thrombosis is anticoagulation and heparin administration is a standard treatment in patients with peritonitis exploratory laparotomy is done now always remember whether in question it is asked arterial or venous if it is arterial then you have to remember that you have to do embolectomy or thrombectomy followed by either bypass surgery or if whether it is required or not but if it is venous then remember you have to give heparin which is drug of choice this was the session of intestinal obstruction where we have covered different etiopathologies classification different types of obstructions their causative factors their treatment complete management of intestinal obstruction and i hope you have enjoyed the session thank you